My dad's told me since the time I was young, if you have to tell people how good you are. How good really are you? And I think he lived by that. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do. Uh, that's something my mom told me from a young age, my dad told me from a young age, and that, that's always resonated with me. And calling it. Nine months. Like any family, parents pass down words of wisdom to their children. But for the Kaepernicks, their lessons in resilience stem from the very way the family was built. I had always wanted children right away. High school sweethearts, Rick and Teresa married young and had their first son, Kyle. They dreamed of having a big family. After Kyle was Lance, and Lance passed away at 23 days of age from heart defects, and after Lance was Kent, he passed away at four days of age from congenital heart defects. So. At age 25, um, we already had two children buried, and we already knew where our cemetery plots were. So you tend to grow up really fast when, when that happens. But the Kaepernicks still held on to their dream, and finally, Teresa gave birth to Devin, their second healthy child. But with the birth came bad news. We had some genetic counseling um, when I was pregnant with Devin and found out there was a high incidence of heart defects in our family. So um, we decided that we just could not have any more children and maybe in the future we would adopt. So we waited um, six years before we actually adopted. And in 1987, they adopted a baby named Colin. He was five, five weeks, six weeks old. And, and then you're, you're getting a child and it's, it's like birth. They handed him to me and it's just kind of an overwhelming feeling. It's, you know, I mean, we, I think both of us, we just cried. And from the very beginning, the Kaepernicks, who lived in a predominantly white community, worked hard to help their son embrace what made him different. I remember him holding his arm up to mine and comparing our colors and I was like, well, that's not fair. You've got such a nice, pretty brown color and I'm so white, you know, so um, trying to make him feel good about himself and which he certainly did. We've went through the fro, we went through the cornrows, <laughs> we've, done, we've done all of that, sure. so, uh, but that's, that's who he is. And, and so that was, that was kind of a fun time trying to find those, those barbershops. Early on, Colin chose football as his sport, even though he also excelled in baseball and basketball, even though he was drafted by the Chicago Cubs in 2009, even though only one college took a chance on him. I'll never forget uh, how many teams wrote me and said, well, you can walk on if you want, but we don't have a scholarship for you. Um, I had coaches tell me I couldn't play because I wasn't competitive enough, I didn't have a strong enough arm. Um, basically every excuse in the book why I couldn't play. People were tell constantly telling me why I wasn't going to be successful. He has a goal and he knows what he's driving for. He won't be happy till the goal's reached. And today, in the biggest game of all, the Kaepernicks have a chance to watch the son who fulfilled their goal, their dream, try to achieve his own. I'm the emotional one in the family, so <laughs> win or lose, I'll be the one crying. We think we're lucky. We think we're real lucky that we got him. If they hadn't lost those two kids, I probably wouldn't be part of that family right now. I love them. They've been everything for me. Um, and they still are everything for me. He's a Kaepernick, and that's about as simple as it is.